Hello everybody, good day. This is Fred with Wentworth CCTV of New England and we are coming at you today with a video inspired by a question from one of our subscribers. His name is JK and this is the question. Hey JK, that's a great question and absolutely you can hardwire your uh, PoE network IP camera directly to a PoE switch and in turn connect that PoE switch to um, your network or to the NVR directly um, and pull up and record your camera that way. Um, that's very doable and there are applications in which that is, is very useful. Um, we're going to cover that in a minute. Before we do so, please click the red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Leave us comments. Again, this video is based on JK's question. Um, so if you give us some comments, we can add some content to try to help you out. Um, and without further ado, let's get into the meat and potatoes. All right, let's get into it. Um, so obviously we have our um, Hikvision NVR here. This is just a, poor, a four port uh, Hikvision NVR. Um, you see we have the four PoE ports. Um, which for the sake of this video, we're not going to use. If you want to auto configure the cameras, you could plug uh, each camera into one of these ports and it would auto configure it. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we are going to use a PoE switch um, to power the camera um, and provide data to the MBR. So we're just going to plug in our, our camera. Um, of course, the cameras have, IP cameras have a um, an IP, a network, Ethernet pigtail. You're going to plug your Cat5 or 6 cable into that. Um, and you're going to plug the other end into one of the PoE ports uh, on your PoE switch. And of course, if your connections are right, you'll see a green and a yellow light. Uh, one for power um, and one for data transmission. Um, with the other cable, um, you are going to plug also your NVR um, through its LAN port now. We don't want to use one of the PoE ports for this. We want to use the LAN port. We are going to plug our Cat5 or 6 cable, preferably Cat6, into that Ethernet port on the MVR. And we're going to run the other end of that cable to the uplink port of our PoE switch. This is a BV Tech switch. We do have videos on these extended range BV Tech switches, PoE switches. There's a link above. These guys can transfer data up to 1,000 feet, which is three times longer than most PoE switches. There's an extended range switch on this. Um, so, so this is a good switch. Um, but we're going to um, run the wire from the PoE switch that the camera's plugged into um, using our uplink port all the way to the location of the NVR. Okay, um, And this is going to allow this camera to be detected on this NVR without using the PoE switches. So people would say, why would you not use the built-in PoE switch that's included with the MVR um, for the deployment of your camera? Um, and there's a couple of questions to that. Um, the most reasonable explanation is if you're in a big building, like we've done one million foot, square foot warehouses, and simply put the run of the cable um, is too long for these built-in PoE switches to work. So if this camera is 600 feet away from the recorder, the recorder's in maybe the security office, the camera's down on the shipping dock, um, and that's farther than 600 feet away, this PoE, built-in PoE switch in the MBR won't work. You can't, you can't hardwire the camera that far. So you'd have to put a switch, um, right? And ideally the switch might be in the QA department in between the shipping dock and the office. So it splits that 600 feet um, you know, to 300 feet on each end. Um, and this PoE switch, like I said, can transmit up to a thousand feet. Um, the NVR, the built-in PoE, uh, the built-in PoE switch in the NVR can't transmit a thousand feet, but the switch can. Um, so getting back to what I was saying, if this is somewhere in the middle, um, you can hardwire the camera to the switch and hardwire the switch um, to the NVR LAN. Um, so some people might also say, well, this method's not going to work because I want to network my NVR on our network for remote viewing with the HIK Connect phone app and on our PCs, you know, in the building. Um, and that, that's simple, too. All you would do, there's two uplink ports on this switch, and it doesn't have to be an uplink port. You could use one of the PoE switch uh, ports as well. 
um, you plug your modem or your server or your firewall directly into the switch, the same switch the camera's plugged into and the same switch the NVR is plugged into. Um, and we can remote configure this NVR with this camera um, for remote viewing using HIK Connect. And there's a video link above for that process. Okay, so now let's log into the computer and let's find this camera on our network and let's network the camera to the NVR. All right, folks, we have at this point our PC plugged into the same network as the NVR. Um, so we are going to use the SADP tool um, to get the IP address of those devices to use for the configuration process. If you have not previously loaded the SADP, downloaded the SADP program from the Hikvision website onto your PC, there's a link above instructing you how to do that. Um, so we're going to open SADP, and lo and behold, we have two Hikvision devices online. Um, you will see the DS7604N1 Q1P4, um, which is a very good four-channel starter NVR, um, I might mention. And you also have the EC1 D12F2, which is a, uh, a cost-effective camera. Um, so these are our two IP addresses. You will see both of them are inactive. So we will want to activate those. How you activate them using this a SADB tool is very simple. Just click on them. And you put a password to activate them. Okay. Um, it's the administrative password. So you want to remember what you use for this. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do that. Channel password. Um, that is if you're going to use the NVR to auto configure um, the cameras using the built in PoE switch. Um, we can go ahead and put that in too, because down the road you may do that. And then we're going to hit activate. Um, GUID mode, um, you don't have to worry about that. We do have a video on our channel that shows you what to do in the event you forget the password. Um, so we're just going to cancel out of here. Um, and you'll see this device is now active. So right now I am going to go ahead and do the same thing for the camera. I'm going to activate it. Just like so. Okay. And we're going to minimize this screen because um, these are security questions. I'm not going to do this for the sake of time in this video. Um, but you can put um, security questions in the camera in the event you forget the camera's password, the administrative password for the cameras. And you can use the answers to these questions um, to reset it. So, you know, like anything else, it has a drop down box. You pick the question and then you put the answer. And if you forget the password, it's going to ask you for those answers. All right. Um, so we're going to minimize this and we are now going to log into our NVR at the IP address of 192.168.1.168. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So let's log into the recorder. Before we get into this part, it's important that your recorder in the camera at this point is plugged into a modem or router. OK, um, that will allow you to to log into them if you have them in a standalone location. This is very important, a standalone location in which there is no modem or router. The NVR is going to default to a 192.168.1.1 gateway for you to log into that using a computer. Um, you're simply going to hit as on the screen above um, the Windows button and the letter X. And that is going to bring you to this prompt, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to hit Network Connections, and then you're gonna hit Ethernet. We're gonna come over here to the right where it says Change Adapter Options right here, where you see Ethernet 2. That is the hardwire Ethernet port on your laptop or computer, okay? You need to put that on the same gateway all right, the same gateway as the NVR and the camera in order to be able to log on to it. So how do we do that? You hover over where it says Ethernet 
uh, connection. Yours might say Ethernet 1, it might say Ethernet 3, um, but it will be your Ethernet connection. The other ones will be Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So we're going to right click with the mouse there and go down to properties. And we are going to pick right here, Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4. Double click on that, folks. And you are going to want to type in your, for your IP address, 192.168.19, just like this. Um, when you tab down, it will auto-populate the subnet mask for you. And then just hit OK. All right. Again, you only need to do this if the camera, the NVR, and, and your computer are not plugged into an active Internet connection with your, with your cable modem. This is for standalone operations only. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So now we can log into the NVR. Um, we'll just use Edge for that. And we'll see if we can find it at 192.168.168. Lo and behold, there it is. We'll log in using the credentials we have previously set up. Now, if we had used the built-in PoE switch that comes included with the NVR, the camera would already be populated. Um, but because we have not, because the camera is hardwired to a PoE switch, we're going to have to auto-configure it now. So we're going to go to the configuration tab right here on the top. And you will see a um, tabs on the left that have populated. We're going to pick camera management. Um, and this is defaulting now to the PoE channels, which are the four PoE ports on the back of the MBR. We're configuring this manually, so we need to click on IP camera. Okay, and we need to change um, the camera settings. So this is going to be camera one, right? So we're gonna hit camera one, it will be highlighted, we're gonna modify it, okay? Um, and instead of plug and play, which is the process we use by directly plugging into the built-in NVR PoE um, that auto configures the camera, we're using a switch, so we're gonna manually configure the camera, okay? And all we need to do to do that is input the IP address of the camera. Again, to find that, we've minimized the screen with our SADP tool. We'll refresh it here. The camera is on 192.168.164. Okay. So we're going to go into here and we're just going to type that, folks. We're going to type the IP address of the camera. Simple as that, right? It's HECVision. We don't have to change that. If by chance you had another manufacturer, you could hit the drop down box. You could pick Samsung, Panasonic, Bosch, Access, whatever the camera may be. Um, access would be a little bit difficult, but also uh, ONVIF cameras, um, which are off brand that use port 80 for communication. You can select those. But this is HECVision. So we're going to leave it um, populated with the HECVision. We'll just input the password that we set up when we configured the camera a moment ago. And we're going to hit OK. And you'll see Save Succeeded. Um, and at this point, the NVR is connecting um, to that camera. Here you see camera one. It's not on the same LAN as the built-in PoE switch. Um, it's on the gateway of the recorder itself. All right, so we'll give it a moment and we'll check how that camera looks. Alrighty, so now let's log into the NVR to see the camera. To do this, because of the plugins HECVision requires, you want to use the regular Internet Explorer. You don't want to use Chrome, Firefox, Edge, um, just straight up old school Explorer. Um, so we're going to click on Internet Explorer. Again, this part kind of stinks. We are not um, HECVision. We're not. HECVision manufacturers. We use HECVision because it's a good cost-effective solution for our clients. Um, but this is kind of inconvenient, I understand, but it's how you have to do it. So we'll type the IP address of the NVR here, and we'll log in one more time, and we'll see that camera. Just looking at the ceiling, but there it is.
There's the camera looking at the ceiling. Um, see if we can move it towards the window for you guys. In a messy office, huh? But that's how it works. Timestamp um, will need to be adjusted. Um, you can do that through the recorder as well. If you go to the configuration tab, um, time settings, you can just sync with your computer. Okay. Um, and you'll see it change the date and time on the camera stamp. The accurate date and time. And you can also name your camera. Okay. We've gone over this before with the OSD video, but very simply just hit configuration. Um, go to your image, OSD settings, and you can name your camera whatever you want. So we'll do test camera. And if you want text overlay, you can actually put the location too. So we can do one for CCTV, right? We'll hit save. Live view. And Dale, you'll see this camera. I don't know why I didn't take one more CCTV. Maybe this camera can't do OSD. Let's see if it's able. Oh, we didn't check it off, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's drag. Maybe put it there. How's that? Let's see how that looks. There you go. Now we've got the camera name, the location, and the time and date stamp. Beautiful. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Again, please subscribe to our channel. There's a subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Um, and we will see you in the field.